Thank you for joining us again and welcome back to our channel. If you are joining us for the first time, we appreciate your time. In this episode, I will be diving into the reason why the veto power is the key with regards to Africa's strategic engagement, which is geopolitical partners. You may have known until now that on this channel, we talk about how Africa as a continent engaged its strategic partner across the world, from Europe, the United States of America, China and also including Russia and more importantly some of the countries in the Middle East including the country of Turkey. In this episode I will be looking at some specifics of the reason why the question about the veto power that Africa is requesting is not going anywhere soon and that's the reason why we are sitting on this to dissect it and also look at more global perspective as to the reason why the continent of Africa's question is so difficult for these geopolitical partners to answer. In these episodes as well, I will be looking at some specifics on the reason why Africa as a continent has realized that that some of those challenges that the continent of Africa goes through could be resolved in a number of ways. The Secretary General of the United Nations himself has expressed concern with regards to why the continent of Africa is being marginalized with regards to the continent's own position. If you look at a continent with over 1.3 billion people, no veto powers in the United Nations Security Council, this is a big concern. And in a recent interview with the Jizairo television station, the Secretary General elaborated on the reason why he considered this being unfair and why the big players and the big five, so to point out, are behaving in such a way that it's not giving room for new players to come in. Let's roll this interview and we will dive into more analysis. Secretary General Antonio Guterres, nice to have you back on Jizairo. It's an enormous pleasure, as always. It's a uh a busy week for you. I want to start with one of the biggest questions, something I'm troubled by, which is when I grew up as a kid, I thought that democracy and a regulated free market were the ideas for how we should run the world. Um, people today don't see those ideas as motivating them. When you think of your role as Secretary General and you represent people all over the world, what are the ideas that we can look to, to the future? I think the most important idea when you are, as I am, in the United Nations is to make people understand that we need to live in a rules-based world. We have the values of the Charter, but we need to have international law and people need to respect international law and international humanitarian law. And there must be accountability because the main problem of today's world is total impunity. There are no rules or nobody respects the rules that exist. And as the geopolitical divides are so deep, there is no respect. Nobody believes that uh, uh, one of the big powers will intervene um, if uh, a situation is created by a troublemaker anywhere. Uh, and so troublemakers have multiplied, spoilers have multiplied. We have seen conflicts more and more. And as I said, a sense of impunity. Every country or every organization or militia or whatever thinks that they can do whatever they want because they know that they will not pay a price for that. Talking of not paying a price is a small word. So to point out, from the African continent's perspective, the African countries want to be at the major center with regards to decision making. It is important if you go back to looking at the strategic issues within the continent of Africa at the moment, going from the war in Sudan, if you look at what happened in Libya during the Muhammad Gaddafi period, Africa had no voice. If you dive down into Sierra Leone, looking at what happened in the Sierra Leone conflict and the world talked about it in the global media. If you dive into appetite, African countries had no power in a number of other geopolitical echoes. If you dive down to looking at the Russia and Ukrainian war, despite that some African countries have come under immense pressure and the continent of Africa had no voice in the United Nations Security Council. 
Most recently, if you look at what's going on in Palestine and Israel, Africa cannot make any decision and the big five are talking. At the moment, if you consider Liberia, which is more important at the time in the continent of Africa, Africa had no voice as well. Looking at Rwanda, so to close that episode, the continent of Africa looking at the Rwanda story in 1994 that we all know, the continent of Africa had no voice in that particular area. That's the reason why the continent of Africa is calling for the reform of the United Nations and that the continent of Africa want to make the strategic decision for things that affect its own future. Let's listen to the president of Ghana with regards to this more very important topic and we will join you on the other side. Madam President, it is impossible to address the challenges of today without speaking of the contradictions that exist within this global institution. We gather here to discuss peace, but wars continue to ravage nations. We speak of justice, yet justice endures. Take the Russian invasion of Ukraine, for instance. Millions of lives have been uprooted. Thousands have lost their lives, and yet the Security Council has struggled to respond decisively, just as it is struggling to make a decisive intervention in the tragic ongoing war in Gaza and the Lebanon. The structure of the Council reflects a world that no longer exists and its failure to act in times of crisis raises a difficult question. What is the purpose of the Security Council if it cannot intervene when the world needs it most? Reforming the UN Security Council is a matter of fairness and necessity. The current structure created in 1945 no longer reflects the realities of today's geopolitical and economic landscape. Africa, Latin America, and South Asia remain underrepresented despite their significant influence on global affairs. This lack of representation undermines the legitimacy of the Council's decisions, and the use of veto power by a few permanent members often paralyzes its ability to act effectively during crises. Reform is essential to ensure that the Council is more inclusive, democratic, and responsive to the complex challenges we face today. The world has changed, and the Security Council must change with it to maintain its relevance in promoting global peace and security. For years, I've championed the need to reform the Security Council as per the Ezzouini Consensus, the Common African Position on UN Reform, which calls for Africa to have permanent seats on the Council. It is incomprehensible that a continent of 1.4 billion people has no permanent voice in shaping decisions that affect global peace and security. The time for half measures is over. We need a Security Council that is fit for purpose in today's world. It is heartening, however, that finally the demand for reform has found acceptance by leaders of two of the five permanent members, President Joe Biden of the United States of America and President Emmanuel Macron of France. Hopefully, the others will soon follow suit. The African continent's importance cannot be underestimated anymore. The growing call with regards to Africa's influence in the world. Africa has decided to take the rightful position and want to charter a new part in its history. If you look at projected figures, by 2030-2050, Africa will have more influence than a number of other continents around the world. It is important that the continent start making decisions and be on the center of the table. This question is so difficult. The call for Africans' presence and to have a veto power at the United Nations has never been allowed. That's the reason why the Secretary General of the United Nations acknowledges this and global media have seen the pressure building up and based on his own perspective that the call has grown to an extent where it's not going to be ignored if something is not done despite the challenges then listen to what he has to say and we will join you on the other side it does appear that security council reform is getting a little more traction than it has historically i see your calls to have african states uh, as permanent members of the Security Council, the United States government is saying in principle they're interested in this. Do you think that there is enough momentum to make a durable, 
reform of the Security Council happen? Probably not immediately, but uh, uh, there is a huge difference in relation to the recent past. When I started my function to talk about the reform of the Security Council was a taboo. That was unacceptable. Now, everybody recognizes that the reform of the Security Council is necessary. I mean, the African situation it is an historic injustice. Uh, Africa has been a double victim of colonialism, first of all, because of colonialism itself, and second, because, because of colonialism, they were not present when institutions were built. Uh, and obviously, uh, we see today uh, emerging economies uh, that are uh, very relevant in the international arena, and it makes absolute sense uh, to take seriously into account their candidacies. For the first time, the five permanent members recognize that they are ready to accept at least an African permanent member in the Security Council or two, like uh, the United States just announced uh, yesterday. And to be clear, we're not talking about extending the veto to African no, countries. No, that's, that's, I don't think is realistic. Uh, the five vetoes will be maintained, even if the five vetoes are one of the reasons why the Security Council doesn't work properly. Yes. But that will be very difficult. Um, of course, the African countries want to have the veto and uh, all the other candidates want to have the veto. Probably it will not happen. But this, the reform of the Security Council is today a central issue in the discussions in the United Nations. And it will be a central issue, I'm sure, in the summit of the future. And I hope that there will be a clear indication that it must be done. The United Nations question has been at the forefront of the minds of geopolitical experts and even those who do not pay attention in regards to the global issues happening around the world. Africa's request for veto power at the Security Council has been talked about as if it's only Africa that is looking for veto powers. There are a number of countries around the world that are also focused on this in Europe who are growing economies in the continent of Africa, in Asia, that want to be on the table. But African countries have taken this gross injustice to a hopeful different level, and that's the reason why the conversation is coming out clear. The relevance of the United Nations has been called into question. That's the reason why the current representative of the United States of America at the United Nations at the moment struggle to explain how this question and the reason how people perceive the United Nations. Let's listen to what she has to say and we close down this episode. Against this backdrop, the world is asking big questions about the United Nations, whether this institution is representative and legitimate, whether it's built to meet the challenges of the, of the day as well as the challenges of the future. And in particular, member states are looking at the Security Council. Up until this point, the Council counted only 11 members, and its composition reflected the world as it was in 1945, rather than the realities of the 1960s. There was, for example, no seat reserved for Africa, but there was one for British Commonwealth countries. There was a seat allotted to Western Europe, in addition to the permanent seats held by France and the United Kingdom, but only one to be shared between Eastern Europe and all of Asia. Faced with a crisis of confidence, it was clear that the UN needed to evolve, and the United States had a decision to make. We could fight that evolution or get on board with it. The rest, as they say, is history. In the years to come, we saw dramatic change in how the UN approached peacekeeping, and development, technology, and science. And in 1965, during UN Ambassador Arthur Goldberg's earliest days in office, we saw change in the size and the composition of the UN Security Council. 11 seats grew to 15, with new non-permanent seats allocated to Asia, Latin America, and Africa. And that's the way it has been ever since. Which brings us to today. The post-Cold War era is over, and we have another moment of profound change and tremendous challenge to the world and the multilateral system that governs it. 
Hopefully, we've informed you with regards to the strategic issue as the reason why the continent of Africa is rising up and asking questions that it wants to take full control over its own geopolitical history and make strategic choices and secure areas where it feels it has its own influence. For now, we want to thank you for watching. Check some of other informative videos on our YouTube channel. We are looking forward to meeting you soon in our next episode. Smash the like button and share the video and have a good day. Bye-bye.